Hello, we are now live day two, day two of our five day series, stepping up to the call. Who are you? Oh, you guys, I can't tell you how excited I am about today. But before we dig in, I want to ask you guys, how many of you had an incredible evening yesterday, just having a conversation with God about who you are? Was it good? Oh, if you missed it, it's never too late. You can always go back to the um, yesterday's broadcast. We are at YouTube. Yes, you can find my channel at cindyrushton.com forward slash YouTube. And you can listen to yesterday's replay. Take some time to listen and then to just spend some time with the Lord. I always say that these recordings are an invitation to a conversation with the Lord. And I believe more than ever, he really wants for us to just clarify on who we are. So that is the whole purpose of this series. This is a five-day series entitled Stepping Up to the Call, Who Are You? And today we are going to dig in deep. And you guys, I just I, it's going to be a little longer today because we are really going to go and play a little in scripture. Are you ready? It's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, but of course, before I get started, I do want to invite you over to my website. Um, we That if it, you can check me out at cindyrushton.com. There, you can also subscribe to my email list and it will give you updates when we have shows or broadcasts or series like this so that you can be aware and you can join us. But also, right there through cindyrushton.com, you can find all the different things that I do. So hop over there. This is my home on the web and I'm inviting you over. Bring your cup of tea, bring your coffee. I have mine right here. Um, just come and jump in and make yourself at home. I even have a community there. So you are so welcome to come and join me there. And of course, you're welcome right here at YouTube where you can dig into our recordings. You can see um, these show, this series as well as other things that we've done in the past. And uh, we are just now getting started. So there's going to be a lot of good stuff. It's going to be right here on my YouTube channel. So thanks for joining. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss even one thing. And uh, make sure to share us with your friends. We so appreciate that. That's how we grow. Well, anyway, let's just um, now get to the business of scripture. Our our session today is called, get this, Perfect Preservation, Preparation, and Positioning for Imperfect People. Okay, somewhere here, and I heard it yesterday whenever we broadcast, there was a sweet friend of mine that messaged me and said, oh my goodness, this is so good, but you know what? I'm struggling. I'm not perfect. And I thought, oh, you have no idea. I already have it right here in, in, in tomorrow's lesson or today's lesson. Because God does not ask for our perfection. He is perfect. And he has made provision for us to be perfected through Jesus Christ. No one's going to believe in Cindy and be saved. No one's going to believe in whoever you are and be saved. That's not the plan. Although we are image bearers, the, the funny thing about the whole thing is we are what I've heard one author say once before, we're cracked pods. But the more cracks in us, the more that the glory, the light can be seen through us. And I just, I, I know that I myself, I am certainly one of the most imperfect people that I know. And the cool thing that I love is that when I dig into scripture, I see a whole plethora of very imperfect people. Now, the one we're going to study today is going to be Moses. And what I love is this is what comes from one of my favorite books of the Bible in Exodus. Exodus is literally, I mean, it's, it is one of my favorite books of the Bible. And I go to this, this book uh, for pretty much everything, because I learned so much through Exodus uh, and Moses's leadership that is recorded in the pages of Exodus. Um, and, and it's from the little bitty things that he did all the way to the very extraordinary things that he did. And you know, what's interesting to me is it's all of these things that are great lessons for us as we step into our calling. So today, are you stepping up to your call? 
Who are you? You know what? There is perfect preservation, preparation, and positioning for very imperfect people. That's God's beautiful plan. And so let's just dig into it. Let's turn to Exodus 3.11. And while you're doing that, um, I just want to ask you, are you grappling with who you are? Are you grappling with the, the, the question? When I ask you, who are you? Do you grapple with the question of who you are? You're not alone. You are so not alone. In fact, that question, many people, like I shared yesterday, they immediately think about their roles. They immediately think about what they have, what they do, what, what they've done, what good, bad achievements, whatever. That's where people tend to go. God has a different definition. And my goal this week is for us to really grasp a hold of that God has a word for us. He has a view of us and he wants us embracing that. So when we ask him, who am I, God? We are not alone. In fact, I'm picking Moses and I'm picking on him a little bit today, but Moses is not the only great man or woman in the Bible that asked, who am I? He's just one of many. And I pick him because actually, although Moses is known as one of the greatest prophets besides Jesus Christ himself, um, people would say he's the, like the number one greatest prophet other than Jesus Christ. Although he, this is his identity that people know him as, they, they know that role that he fulfilled in history, here he's having a major identity crisis where I'm taking you today. Right there where I'm talking about God is supernaturally calling him. I mean, let me just back up and just tell you right here in Exodus 3, we come straight into the story of God literally coming into Moses' everyday mundane, hiding on the backside of the desert life. <laughs> and we see him coming into that place with Moses. And what I love is Moses's first question is, who am I? Oh, stick with me. This is going to get good. But here we see all of the elements of a man who's literally having an identity crisis, a man who is running from the call and he's hoping that God just forgets everything he's ever had for him in his life. Oh yeah. So let's just back into this, um, let's go back into this passage. Let's go back in time. I love this passage from the Me Message Bible. Let me read it to you. It says, Moses was shepherding the flock of J Jethro, his father-in-law and the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the west side, uh, the west end of the wilderness and came to the mountain of God, Horeb. The angel of God appeared to him in flames of fire blazing out of the middle of a bush. Okay, now, ho, 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 ho. Let's think you're in the middle of a desert and all of a sudden there's a, a bush that's burning, but it's not burning up. Okay. And so here he goes. He said, he looks, the bush was blazing away, but it didn't burn up. Moses said, what's going on here? I can't believe this. Amazing. Why doesn't the bush burn up? God saw that God saw that he had stopped to look and God called to him from out of the bush. Moses, Moses, he said, yes, I'm right here. God said, don't come any closer. Remove your sandals from your feet. You're standing on holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, uh, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, afraid to look at God. God said, I've taken a good long look at the affliction of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cries for deliverance from their slave masters. I know all about their pain. And now I've come down to help them, pry them loose from the grip of Egypt, get them out of that country and give, bring them to a good land with wide open spaces, a land lush with milk and honey. The land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. 
the Israelite cry has come, for help has come to me, and I've seen for myself how cruelly they've been treated by the Egyptians. It's time for you to go back. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the people of Israel, out of Egypt. Moses answered God, but why me? What makes you think I could ever go to the Pharaoh and lead the children of Israel out of Egypt? Now, I love this verse again in Amplified Bible. I'm not going to read the whole passage. I just love the message setting it up for us. But here in the Amplified Bible, it says, but Moses said to God, who am I? Who am I? Come on. Who am I? You know, we're going to look at this passage even more in the next several days, but I want us to stop here and I want to camp for a moment here. Do, do you grapple with who you are? Do you wonder how God could use you? Are you thinking that you are the very least qualified, um, not just by your ability, but by your past, your story, your life? My sweet friend, you are exactly the person that God has called. You are so perfect. You're perfectly prepared. You are simply perfect. Yes, yes, yes. Just soak that in for a moment. You have a perfect background. Yep. Even the messy stuff. Especially. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Especially the messy stuff. I, I heard a while back someone say that it is our mess that gives us our message. Yeah. It's the messy that's going to totally equip you and, and prepare you perfectly for your call. I'm not saying go out there and get a testimony. What I'm saying is most of you already have one. Most of you have already gone through the test. And you know, you have a testimony of how God delivered you from that particular test, that particular mess. Many of you have had the struggle and you are now strong. And there are people that are grappling with the same thing that you have gone through and they are waiting. They're wondering. And it's the same thing that we see here with Moses. You know, Moses was perfectly, get this, preserved, prepared, and positioned for his calling. He wasn't perfect. No, 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 no. Far from it. He was pretty much like most of us. He was far from perfect. But I can tell you, he was definitely perfectly preserved, prepared, and positioned for everything God wanted for him to do in his life. You are too. Stick with me. Let's go back in time. Let's look at this. Even as a baby, what happened, he was actually born during the time that the Pharaoh who was ruling over Egypt, the king, or in his view, he considered himself a god. Um, many of the empires that were run by kings or leaders, those empires, the, the leadership, they saw themselves as God. It's very much, that's a common denominator of all the empires of the world in the past. And this empire was no different. The Pharaoh over Egypt considered himself a God. And he, he himself, get this, such a God that he got afraid that his people, that the children of Israel were going to rise up and overthrow him. He was such a God. Hello. <laughs> but anyway, we won't go there today. But in this time that he was afraid, what he decided to do was to have all of the Israelite babies murdered. He wanted them thrown into the Nile and the Nile, that was like a worship of their gods that they had there. So he ordered that all the children be put to death. Well, some of the midwives allowed children to co come to birth. And you know the whole story. You can go back and read Exodus 1 and 2. But in this story, Moses happened to be a baby that his mother absolutely could not do that. She just could not let her baby be put to death. And so for three months after he was born, she nursed him until she couldn't hide him anymore. And at that time, she came up with this plan where they built a basket and they put him in a basket as a little baby and had him floating in the, in the Nile River. I mean, kind of obeyed, but didn't obey. I love a mom who really gets that the empire is not the God. I love that. And I could go that direction too, but we are not today. But this woman... Uh, she honored life of her child and she put him in a, in a place, in a position that was to per perfectly preserve his life. 
Because what happened, he was floating in this basket. And of course, you know the story. Pharaoh's daughter came out to bathe. That's, that's, she came out into the Nile River to bathe. And when she did, she heard the little baby, saw the little baby. Um, and when she did, she asked for, um, she wanted to keep him. So she asked for a woman to nurse the baby. It happened to be that Miriam, his sister, was watching after him. And she helped take the Moses to be with his mother to be nursed until he was weaned. So he got, he was perfectly preserved. His life was perfectly preserved. When he was weaned, they took him into the Pharaoh's home and he was raised as the, the, the Pharaoh's grandson. And so he was given all the, all the privileges, all of the luxuries, all the privilege that the Pharaoh's own daughter and son and grandsons and family granddaughters all were given. He was given an education. He was given culture of the Egyptians. He was given positioning. And so he was literally also perfectly prepared. You'll see that as we go on through the story. And if you wanted to really go through and look at all the things he did in his life, it's all the things in his life. You'll see that he was perfectly prepared even to lead the children of Israel because of the upbringing that he had. He had perfect preparation. And then, of course, he was perfectly in position all, uh, um, by being there, to be able to be among the people, but to be in the Pharaoh's home, preserved and protected and, and prepared right there. But things go already. Let's take a look at the story. It says in Exodus 2 that we, um, that, uh, I'm sorry, in Acts 7, it says, Then Moses came on the scene, a child of divine beauty. His parents hid him from Pharaoh as long as they could spare his life. After three months, they could no longer conceal him, so they had to abandon him to his fate. Now, I love this, the way this story is put, and this is, by the way, from the Passion Translation, I believe, or, yeah, or is that the... I think that may be passion. Anyway, so they had to abandon him to his fate, but God arranged that Pharaoh's daughter would find him, take him home, and raise him as her own son. So Moses was fully trained in the royal courts and educated in the highest wisdom Egypt had to offer until he arose as a powerful prince and eloquent orator. Now I want to camp here because we get a lot of false teaching here that just is kind of a pet peeve. When I've read Acts 7, I have a hard time with the fact that people make him out to be some stuttering, ignorant fool that, you know, why did God call him? No, he was perfectly prepared. It says in the Amplified Bible, it says, so Moses was educated, get this, in all the wisdom and culture of the Egyptians, and he was a man of power in words and deeds. Another translation said that he was eloquent in his words and mighty in his deeds. This man was a force. He was perfectly, again, preserved and prepared and, of course, positioned. Listen to what happens next. He says, <clears throat> now, and by the way, I want to I want to just say here one other quick thing before I move on. I say perfect preservation, perfect preparation and perfect positioning, but I'm not saying perfect man. You haven't heard me say that one time cuz listen what happens. Whew, it gets good. <clears throat> this is Acts 7 in the Passion Translation. It says, "Now when Moses turned 40, his heart was stirred for his people, the Israelites." One day, he saw one of the people being violently mistreated, so he came to his rescue. And with his own hands, Moses murdered the abusive Egyptian. Moses hoped that when the people realized how he had rescued one of their own, that they would recognize him as their deliverer. How wrong he was. The next day, he came upon two of our own. Our people engaged in a fist fight, and he tried to break it up by saying, Men, you are brothers. Why would you want to hurt each other? But the perpetrator pushed Moses aside and said, Who do you think you are? Who appointed you to be your, our ruler and judge? Are you going to kill me like you did the Egyptian yesterday? Now I want to just ho, ho, ho. We wonder why, in just a minute, we're about to have this flashback of his questioning God for what people were going to say about him. 
because here, this is not a story he made up. This is literally words he's heard. And so many of us are just like him. We've made the mistakes and we may have even had people tell us, or we maybe even have told ourselves all the millions of reasons why God can't use us or all the millions of things that we think we are. Come on. How many of you last night when you were going over day one, you said, I'm really struggling here. I don't even know who I am. Because for so long, you maybe have been telling yourself all these, all these stories of who you are. Moses did the same thing. We have to really get into his life here to realize he didn't make this up either. There were people that this person said this. I mean, how many of us have the same thing? Who do you think you are? Come on. You ever asked? Have you ever heard that voice saying, who do you think you are to have a ministry? Who do you think you are to being married? Who do you think you are to be a mother? Who do you think you are? Come on. And then who appointed you to be our ruler and our judge? Let me tell you something. This is something I've seen throughout the Bible. All the great men and women of the Bible, many of them have heard the same thing. And it's usually from people that mean a lot to them. You, you see Joseph, his brothers, even his mom and dad are going, who do you think you are? Do you think you're going to rule us? Do you think you're going to judge us? Do you think that you're going to be set over us? And it led to other things in his, their lives, his life. Come on. What about Jesus? Jesus was ministering and all of a sudden he gets interrupted by his brother James who comes and says, hey, family's over here. You need to stop this. And he's like, who's my mother? Who's my father? Who's my brother? Who's, who's my family? Come on. We have to really know that we are not the only one who has heard the stories, who, who's been even been maybe heard someone ask the questions, has had that put into us. And maybe even we've said it over ourselves. We are not the only ones. In fact, if you're sitting there today, you're going, ah, hello, I'm that, I'm that person. I totally get it. I've been the one to say the same thing. You're not alone. Does that comfort you? I pray it does. But this, are you going to kill me like you did the Egyptian yesterday? Come on. Oh, they were very aware of what he did. Very aware of his mistake. How many of us, there are people that just throw it up. Well, you did this or you did that. Or maybe you yourself have made a whole list of reasons that you think you're not qualified to do what God has called you to do. Okay, now let's keep reading. It says here, shaken by this, Moses fled Egypt and lived in exile in the land of Midian, where he became a father of two sons. Okay, now. We see here that he is definitely prepared. He's definitely preserved. He's definitely positioned, but he's definitely not perfect. Can I tell you today, God's not asking you to be perfect. Jesus has been perfect for you. What he has asked you, he has invited you to be the bride of Christ, to be part of his family. And you know what? That identity as his beloved erases all your mistakes that 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 identity it erases all of these questions about your abilities don't believe me stick with me look at this he's definitely not the perfect choice he doesn't have the perfect background but get this as we continue this story we see he was perfectly prepared preserved and positioned for his purpose. And today, I want you to know that God perfectly prepares even imperfect people. It says here in verse 30, after 40 years had passed, while he was in the desert near Mount Sinai, the messenger of Yahweh appeared to him in the midst of a flaming thorn bush. We started reading that yesterday, didn't we? Um, so 
back in Exodus 3 of the Amplified Bible, it says here, the Lord said, I have in fact seen the affliction, the suffering and desolation of my people who are in Egypt. And I have heard their cry because their taskmasters, taskmasters or oppressors. I know their pain and suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the hand or the power of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a land that is good and spacious, to a land flowing with milk and honey, a land of plenty to the place of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Parasite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, all the ites. <laughs> now behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I've seen how the Egyptians oppress them. My friends, here is the whole mission of Moses. It says, therefore, come now, I'll send you to the Pharaoh and then I'll bring my people, the children of Israel out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I? Come on, stop for a minute. Think about this. How do you relate to this story? Do you? Do you relate? I do. I'm telling you. The reason this has stood out to me is because I totally get this. I totally see this. This is basically Cindy's story. You know what? Moses had perfect preservation, perfect preparation, perfect positioning, but he was a very, very imperfect person. And his background was far from perfect. His story was totally messy, filled with very messy stuff. I mean, like, come on, he was a murderer. Any of you have, how many of you topped that one? It's okay if you do, because guess what? God specializes in messy. Again, he's not going after your righteousness and that's not how he's building your platform is based on your righteousness and your goodness and how much you can do and how much you can accomplish. His, he's building you because he's enough. He's everything that we need. He has, he has the qualification and you are covered by Jesus Christ. So you have taken on his righteousness. He's took, all, he's took on all your mess, all your mistakes, all of your weaknesses. And you've taken on all his righteousness. He has put you seated in heavenly places as his beautiful beloved. Come on, you guys. So here, he was running from God for years and years. Get this. He wasn't just running from God for six months. This is 40 years that he's been on the backside of the desert. And he grew up with privilege. What slave would listen to him? Come on. This is applicable to our day where there are people who think, oh, I won't listen to you because you had some kind of privilege. Just They judge you just by your skin or you're not good enough because you have this or you do that or you come from here. I, I've experienced that. I've experienced being too white, being too from Mississippi. Come on. Being from a family that my parents divorced, being divorced myself. Come on. I totally get where people say, and, and where I would say to myself, why would they ever listen to me? Because I get that. Many of us have that. We all have our story of why we think people wouldn't want to listen to us. It's funny to me, and I just want to say this, that it's funny to me that in this day and time that some of us think that people won't listen because of our privilege and some think because that we, they won't listen because we haven't been privileged in an area. Come on, we got to get past the words and the ideas of the culture. That's why we have to redefine who we are based on what the word says. That's why we're doing this series. One of the reasons. We can't define ourselves based on what the world defines us as or what we do when we're doing it by the world's standards. God has a much better way. And these are some of his ways that he wants us to learn his ways. We, he wants us to go his way. So, you guys, I'm just telling you, here he was. He grew up in privilege. He was married, by the way, to an outsider. How about that? He had a million excuses for why he couldn't do it. Why he was an imperfect person. Do you relate? Come on. You are simply perfect. Yes, you are. With your perfect background, <laughs> as imperfect as it can be, with your messy stuff, with 
your perfect gifts and bents and talents and experiences, all of it makes you perfect. All of it. Exactly as you are. And today, I just want to ask you, do you know who you are? You are exactly who God says you are. You can do exactly what God says you can do. You have everything that God says you have. He is everything he says that he is. He can do every single thing he said he could do. And he will do what he says he will do. He'll never let us down. And guess what? He's, he can and he will do it in and through you. Come on. He's not going to let you down. He will do it for you. He will do it in, it in you. He will do it through you. So today, I just want to ask you to stop and ask the Lord, hey, what's this package that I'm presenting to you? Have I been buying some lies that have held me back from really stepping all in? How, what is it you have to say about this? Help me, Lord, to know who you say I am. Help me to believe it. Help me to know that there's not an accident, that I have been perfectly preserved, perfectly prepared, and perfectly positioned. Even if I'm not perfect, I am the perfect person for this. Whew, come on. Well, you guys, I, this is day two of our series and stepping up to the call, who are you? We have three more big days and I want to invite you back to those other three days where we're going to unpack this a little bit more and keep going deeper and keep moving forward. I hope that today this has given you some things to think about. And I believe from the bottom of my heart, again, this is an invitation to a conversation with God. He wants to speak to you and through you. He wants to be able to, to talk to you about who you really are. Ah, so take some of these notes, unpack this, take it before him and begin that conversation with him. Ask him who you are. Why you? Why you? Oh, and if you missed yesterday, definitely hop back over to YouTube. You can find my YouTube at cindyrushton.com forward slash YouTube. If you are not on my mailing list, also hop over to cindyrushton.com and, and, and look for stay connected and sign up for my mailing list. Subscribe to that YouTube channel. Subscribe to my mailing list. Let, give me some feedback as to what you took away from this today and share me with a friend. How about that? And be here tomorrow, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. We're going live again and we're going to set um, day three in this series. Are you ready? Let's do it. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Have a great day.